We acknowledge the traditional owners of country throughout Australia and recognise their continuing connection to land, waters and culture. We pay our respects to their elders past, present and emerging. This is Cheryl from Jajawarong Country. This is Beyond 90, the podcast on Joy 94.9, taking you behind the goals, beyond the pitch and into what makes women's football the game we love. Welcome to episode 92 of Beyond 90 Pod. Thanks so much for tuning in, whether you're watching that on the usual pod platforms or Joy Radio or Clutch Radio, we really appreciate uh, the support. I'm Eric Sabiano, just at the time of recording, fresh off calling an NPL New South Wales women's game. So I'm in, obviously in the mood for more talking about football and uh, Cheryl our usual host could not be with us, but uh, we've got three capable people alongside me to cover up for my force. So firstly, uh, Madge up in Queensland, how are you going? Yeah, not too bad. My voice is finally back after um, a, a big night cheering in Canberra. So yeah, I can talk. Yay, yes. And speaking of Canberra, that's the perfect segue to real, really the other two guests. So firstly, Stefan, who still still lives there. How's it going, Stefan? Uh, good, thanks. Hi, everyone. Yeah, still still coming down slowly from the massive week here. So uh, mm. what a week it was. Yep. Yes. And also uh, other Canberra that now lives in Sydney, Dale. So uh, thanks so much for tuning in. And I gave you several uh, seconds notice that we were recording. Yes, you did. <laughs> yes, yes. 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 <laughs> okay. So, uh, no, I was d- disappointed not to get to the game on last Tuesday. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I was very glad, very glad that there was such a good turnout. Yes. So firstly, and... Uh, for those of you that may be tuning in for the first time or haven't uh, watched many of, much of our pods, we like to do a little bit of history at the start of each pod and by matching a Matilda's cap number to the episode number, this being episode number 92, we'd like to talk about Matilda's cap number 92, which is Kristen Swaffer. Uh, Kristen made her Matilda's debut in 1996 and played for the national team until 2003, made 30 appearances in A internationals, scoring once. Uh, Kristen was a defender in Australia's 1999 World Cup squad. She played for Adelaide United in the dub and also Adelaide Sensation and Canberra Eclipse in the Ansett Summer Series. Um, And Kristen was inducted into Football South Australia's Hall of Champions in 2011 for outstanding performances. So So these achievements via Football South Australia... SA WSA player of the year five times, club best player four times. This is quite a long list. Top SA WSA goal scorer twice, top club goal scorer three times, clubs players player of the year twice, most consistent SA WSA state player in 1995, and best player in the state team 1996. Also vice captain of Adelaide United's inaugural W League team. So uh, that's quite the list of achievements. And Via uh, Groobs, a uh, friend of Beyond 90, who of course uh, knows all of these players from this era. Uh, Swaff, a reasonably rare South Australian representative. Another centre back, if memory serves correctly. Wow, a South Australian centre back. You love to see that. Uh, gee, we had a strong proliferation of fullbacks back then. Swaff was tall, strapping, strong, good speed, and could push forward. Combined well with Sharon Black at national and international level. An intelligent player who could dispossess players without them knowing, deceptively quick and light-footed. So uh, wherever we are, we hope Kristen Swaffer is doing well. So on to the hot topics, and I suppose there's no hot topic than the Matildas playing in Australia. So we could start with the game, of course, that we've already referred to down in Canberra in the nation's capital. Matildas 3, New Zealand 1. And as it's in Canberra, I suppose we might as well throw to Stefan first. So uh, your thoughts on the game, Stefan? Yeah, well, what a, uh, it, after a bit of an iffy first five minutes, the uh, the first half was was uh, astounding, wasn't it? Um, the touch was really good. Uh, the speed was good. Uh, the intent was excellent. And, um, yeah, it was just a... Um, Really, really good vibe around the, the ground as well um, at, at Bruce Stadium, at Canberra Stadium, and uh, good crowd, good conditions. So, uh, very much enjoyed the first half. The second half was um, perhaps not quite as good. Um, we there were a couple of positional changes, which meant we lost some of the zing from the flanks. And uh, when Nelly Carpenter went to the back, and Haley got taken off, and um, but still very, very solid. Um, performance and 
a great occasion having, you know, with the team not having been here for so many years. So, uh, yeah. What did you think, Madge? Well, I was just going to say with those um, changes in the second half, I got my dream. I got to have Katrina Gorey and Alex Chidiak on field at the same time. So um, I was pretty happy about that. But um, I, mean, I spent most of the game there in the in the active section. So to be honest, I wasn't really paying much attention to the um, yes. to the <laughs> tactic- uh, tactical changes that were happening during the game. Um, except we, no, everyone did know when Alex Chidiak came on, so so we got her chant going up um, around in the active section as well. But had had a fantastic time there. Um, uh, was really happy to see the crowd get involved with us as well. So um, that was fantastic to see. So yeah, watching it back, um, totally agree. I think the first half, and if you look at the stats again, it's a similar ish story to the first game, but probably, yeah, when those changes were brought on um, in the second half, it did seem a little bit mis- more disjointed, which um, you know, I mean, I guess you expect they're, they're, they're not as used to those combinations aren't as, as used to each other as playing um, together as, as what I'm pretty sure it was the same starting 11. There may have been one or two changes um, from Townsville. So it was a, a pretty consistent first half team there. But I mean, I, what, I guess what's really, what was really nice was some of the finishing um, that we did have there in the first half. So um, I think last pod, and, and maybe I should complain again, um, because I did complain about Haley Razzo's finishing in Townsville, uh, but then she came up with an absolute uh, beautiful pinpoint uh, finish for the second goal of the game. Um, uh, and I think uh, Sam Kerr's um, second goal as well, uh, and Australia's third goal was, was um, a pretty nice pinpoint finish as well. So, but again, I mean, there were, there were lots of missed chances again. So we still had like uh, heaps of shots um, that you would we probably still want to see a bit more clinical finishing, I think, going forward. And then, you know, and then the big um, the big thing is that we, we did get caught out in defence again, um, the quick transition goal um, through to Hannah Wilkinson, who was able to, I guess, just uh, bully her way through um, Claire Polkinghorne and sort of get that ball away, which was a bit disappointing. It would be nice for us to get a clean sheet at some stage. Um, I don't think we've had one in a while, um, in you know, except well, maybe in, in the Asian Cup. So, um, but yeah, fun game. Um, Canberra conditions were fantastic. That beautiful autumn temperature for um for football so had a great time yep and of course don't don't feel bad active support bay not the place to do any kind of strenuous tactical analysis uh like i uh, like your point on, i think the third goal samco second um yeah i was watching that in the corner f- near the corner flag with um friend of beyond 90 nick amy's and i could was in the perfect position to see sam's really bent around it kind of looked like she kind of changed direction a couple of times start dropped off a bit ran across the line that kind of bent her run and it was timed perfectly. So, uh, yeah, that was a really great run. I'm not sure if the TV cameras picked that up, but, uh, yeah, great movement but, as well because movements didn't obviously just But also on that goal, it's like sometimes the long ball to Sam Kerr is a fantastic option. I don't know people have been mm. um, complaining about the long ball game, but when you've got Sam Kerr, you can do that and can pull out a goal like that. Um, it's, it's, it's a wonderful option to have in the bag. Yeah, so uh, Dale, just your thought. Of course, yeah, you um, live tweeted I mean, that for us. Yeah. I was going to say, yeah, I, I I think the the one thing that like the point that Madge makes around um, like a long ball over to Kerr not always being a bad option. Like, you know, she's obviously one of the fastest players in world football. I think our criticism, obviously, about um, playing balls over the top is that often we're they're kind of doing it out of desperation to discount the fact that we're being dominated in midfield or being shut down in midfield. But I think like sometimes, as we saw with the Wilkinson goal, like sometimes a long vertical pass is fine as long as you've got a player that can play that kind of style. And Kerr is we're blessed to have that kind of player, you know, a player of many gifts like Sam Kerr. So, um, yeah, I don't have too much of a problem with that um, at all. But, yeah, I mean, it was it was kind of a, as you say, Stefan, like, it was kind of a funny start to the game like you know we had the issue with Paige Satchel then we had kind of two goals and then you know game settled down a little bit um it was it was the, the second half was kind of good in a sense that we were clearly trying some new things out like playing three 
back, you know, playing with effectively two defensive, well, two pivots in the base of midfield, just different things that we might have to use in, on another occasion. Um, so I'm glad that we were at least able to, to kind of um, not throw caution on the wind, but try a few things out. Remember, we, we lost that game against France where there was that famous quote that we didn't train to, train to play against three at the back. So the more that we can train for situations that we're not used to, then, then the better that we'll be, um, you know, come tournament time. And of course, um, before the Matildas game down in Canberra against the Football Ferns, uh, we had the inaugural Women on Side Women's Football Writers Festival. Uh, it was lovely to see um, Anne O'Dong, really, you know, the fairy godmother of Australian women's football, or at least Australian women's football media coverage, uh, announced as the inaugural recipient of the Outstanding Contribution to Women's Football Writing and Media Award. Of course, I do believe Anne caught up in that whole international team bubble thing and couldn't actually join us. I think that's the reason she wasn't there, but uh, we were able to award that uh, virtually, if that makes sense. And so, yeah, obviously couldn't think of anyone more deserving for that award. Now, I was uh, caught up with things that morning, but uh, Stefan, you know, obviously a great event and we hope uh, to have more meetups like that in the future. And it was good to actually meet people in person for once. But uh, Stefan, what were your thoughts of the uh, Women's Onside Football Writers Festival? Yeah, well, wasn't it a terrific start to a great day? I mean, the afternoon was uh, just flew by. There was uh, around f- almost forty people in the room. Uh, a lot of, lot of um, uh, like-minded people who had very interesting points of view of things. Uh, really lovely to catch up with some people um, from Beyond Ninety and some people who have had ties to Beyond Ninety in the past, uh, and some, you know, to speak in person with some of those for the first time ever. Um, Really good mix of um, people in the room, not, not just authors, there were media people, um, there were commentators. Uh, Steph Brantz was there, Ish Ferguson was there, for example, Ray Dow was there. Um, so, you know, and alongside um, some very experienced um, um, people who've been in the women's game for, you know, since, since almost day one here in the room as well. So it was just a terrific mix of people. Uh, really enjoyed it and just set us up so well for the for the evening. So uh, yeah, so I just wanted to. Uh, it's a shame that our Cheryl couldn't be be along. Um, having also, I think, put a lot of effort into uh, alongside uh, all the uh, the women on side committee to uh, to get the event up and going. But um, some of the highlights, I just took a couple of notes, if if that's if I may. Um, Fiona Crawford was there, the author of Never Say Die, and she she kicked things off. And uh, one of the important points that I wrote down that she that she noted was that she'd like to see it get to the point where uh, women writers don't um, ask themselves, "Who am I to work to to write these stories?" Where it just um, becomes something that you know they do, and they don't have to think about why they're doing it or who am I to do it. So uh, it was a really good point. Beyond ninety, the podcast on joy, taking you behind the goals beyond the pitch and into what makes women's football the game we love. This is Beyond 90, the podcast on Joy 94.9. Uh, we had Susie Rupp from, from The Guardian there um, talking uh, with us as well with, with Kieran Pender on video link um, and um, a couple, some really fine panels. We, we heard from Heather Reid, for example, um, that she's thinking about doing a, a podcast series about um, you know her her history in the game. Um, you know, of course, the magnificent award that was really a privilege to be there to to see it awarded to to Anne um, Anne O'Dong, presented by um, uh, Capital Football's Fran Sankey. That was that was awesome, um, and a tremendous couple of two uh, keynote speeches um, from um, Marissa Lordanic and Samantha Lewis, who obviously got ties to. Um, strong ties to Beyond 90 in the past as well, which which were on point, I have to say. They were just really, really well um, thought through and, and said. And uh, some really good panels. Lovely to see Eric and, and Molly uh, in the room and uh, on the panel at, towards the end uh, talking about podcasts and um, media. And, uh, yeah, so I just I just loved it. I, I, left, I left that room just feeling really good about... Uh, what we'd heard in the afternoon, and it just set me up perfectly for the game afterwards. So, uh, um, yeah, Nick Amis was there, as, as Eric said as well. He's obviously done some work here as well for PR90. So what do you think, Eric? You were, you were there as well. It was really good. Yeah, to- I mean, 
just my commitments, which did actually involve publishing one of your articles, Stefan, that morning. I was a bit late, but yeah, I can only echo what you've said. We uh, should love, uh, hopefully there's more of these. I think it, obviously it was great to probably given how important Canberra is to women's football in this country, good to have the first one in Canberra, but hopefully we can uh, hit some different venues and maps get either a bigger attendance or perhaps different people coming as well. Cause I mean, Angela Christian Wilkes would have been there. Uh, that was the intention anyway, but unfortunately uh, I think there was a last late change and she couldn't make it, but yeah, just, you know, it's good that we can only, obviously I feel what you feel about it, Stefan. And so I think it's important that uh, women on site take these to, you know, different cities. So, uh, you know, kind of more people can get involved and have the chance to network now um, moving on. On and of course, it wasn't just an international weekend for us and the Kiwis. Of course, international games everywhere. Now, I mean, I think you all know which game, international game took my eye. But did anything in European World Cup qualifiers or otherwise? Um, anyone? Any games that anyone wants to talk about? Sorry, Eric. I only know the the people who qualified. So. Oh, that's that's you're actually doing better than I am, Madge. So I only know oh. one one that sealed their well, qualification. I was going to say the, the yeah the the one that you would probably mention, Eric. The I know that there was that Irish uh, Republic of Ireland versus Sweden yes. draw. Uh, Gumla uh, Gumla Levy. Um, I did notice. Uh, I can't remember who it was. It might have actually been Susie Rack, but I can't remember who it was. Somebody tweeting that the last game at. Sweden played at Friends Arena. They sold out, so they moved it to a smaller venue. So good work for the Swedish Football Federation. Mm. Um, but yeah, that was the only match that I saw. I do know that uh, obviously uh, there was a lot of European qualifying on, but unfortunately with the way of the world, with all of the uh, various uh, TV channels, not not very easy to get that kind of stuff over here. Yeah, but I mean, we, we of course did get Sweden, uh, France, and Spain have actually qualified now, so yes. um, they will be coming mm-hmm. down under in 2023. Um, I'm fairly sure that um, England and Germany must be pretty close, but they maybe just need to get uh, a few more points to get there. Yes. But um, but yeah, so officially, three European teams have qualified now. Excellent. And then I um, suppose we could leave discussion of the world's most convoluted playoff system to to when it starts in terms of World Cup qualifiers. So I ah, yes, and um, if anyone wants to know more about uh, how the qualification works in terms of the playoffs, not the automatic qualifiers for Europe and indeed the intercontinental playoffs, it's available on Wikipedia, but uh, take two headed headache tablets before you start reading it because it's quite a lot. Yeah, go, uh, go, yeah. go outside and t- like touch grass before you yes, read that. Yes, please, Seriously. please do. It's, it's, yeah, it's, it's like me. Yeah, it's, a, it's, a, it's a read. Yeah, the, the, the thing I think the main takeaway from the intercontinental playoffs, of course, is held in Australia and New Zealand as a test event to the World Cup. So we'll uh, get to see more international football. We love that. And of course, countries we wouldn't usually see, which I think is the, the best bit about that. Now, um, yeah, back on to uh, Sweden won, Republic of Ireland won, a huge point for the Irish, uh, Katie McCabe. Uh, actually putting Ireland in front there was a late equalizer from Sweden I unfortunately forgot who it was but so that point was enough for Sweden but you know they set high standards they weren't too happy to be held uh, to not win a game at uh, not not win a home qualifying game for the first time in I think over a decade and the, but the Republic of Ireland delighted and that's big for them as they chase um, one of those playoff spots I'm pretty sure England beat Northern Ireland 5-0 which um, was the other only other result I know. And and uh, what was kind of an international friendly, um, the Philippines, who are in Western Sydney preparing for next month's Southeast Asian Games, which will be held in Vietnam, they actually played Blacktown Spartans on Friday. Uh, Blacktown Spartans won by goal to nil, and the goal from coming from the Queen of Blacktown, Ashley Croft. So that's many, many parts of my brand working together there. Uh, so on to the... On to England and the FA Cup semi-finals. So uh, I think, so what we do know is Manchester City defeated West Ham 4-1. Good news for Alana Kennedy and Hayley Rasso. And then Chelsea defeated Arsenal 2-0. So that's Sam Kerr, obviously. Three Aussies in the FA Cup final, which be held on May the 15th. But Adele, you had at least one thought about 
the Arsenal Chelsea game. Yeah, it was the first it was I think it was the first time all season that Arsenal hadn't registered a shot on target. Um I didn't get to watch the TV coverage supposedly wasn't actually available in Australia, but didn't get to watch yeah. the coverage. Um but I read the minute by minute and the uh and the like the the match report and they were just absolutely scathing of Arsenal. It's a sold out uh sold out day at Boreham Wood. Um Ooh. Ooh. Meadow Park, I believe their stadium's called, but um, sold out, sold out game, and just like didn't function as a football team, which is pretty rough for, for Arsenal fans. Yeah. Um, but yeah, as you say, it, really good to see, you know, three another three Aussies at Wembley, um, and this will be, I think, a replay of the League Cup or the Continental Cup final. So that'll be um, really, really good to see. And yeah, also cool. a really, a really great effort from Alana Kennedy. I'm pretty sure she was playing with the face yeah, mask. Yeah, I saw breaking, the mask. That's one, the yeah, one thing I did yeah. see. Yeah, breaking her nose in the mm. Matildas game. So that mustn't have been comfortable, but she um, soldiered on anyway. So well done. Yeah, on that point, um, I feel like just given in that team, she wouldn't have been able to get away with not playing because I think Alex Greenwood had to wear a mask earlier in the season. So another central defender. So I think mm. there might've been a little bit of that peer pressure there um, for Alana Kennedy, but you know, it's good to see her get through it because yeah, that was one of the, um, I mean, kind of funny, but also not that funny moments from Australia versus New Zealand when Alana Kennedy saw her broken nose on the big screen. Yeah, that was, it was pretty good. Yes. But, no, not good, but yes, yes. we all know. Yes. Yeah. So on that, unfortunately we, it's been this chaotic um, Easter weekend, or oh, I'm sorry, this chaotic Catholic Easter weekend, as um, yes. they are not, yes, I'm well aware of this. Um, the We won't, haven't done my usual work with regards to Aussies abroad, but I can tell you, I did get, we do have some scores from the Scottish Women's Premier League where one or two Aussies play, depending on your point of view. And so Jacinda Galabaterashti, she's getting a lot of game time at Celtic. Good to see a start in 76 he started and played 76 minutes uh, for Jacinta and her Celtic team beat Partick Thistle 2-0. Now, Aoife Colville, who mm, is she Is she from Northern Queensland? Is she one of Stefan's former Canberra United players? Is she Australian? Is she Irish? There's a lot of arguments going on, but and, and she's unfortunately recovering from an ACL injury. But for what it's worth, her Glasgow City team beat uh, Spartans four goals to nil. So... I think the answer to all those is yes, Eric. Yes, she's she's <laughs> many she's many things, but most importantly, she's many a things to many people. Yes, that's the most yes. important thing. Yeah. Now, the- I just saw the new Michelle Yeoh movie yesterday, so I'm about everyone being everything all the time. Every, every, oh. Yes. Ah, yes. This is. Um, so uh, that's that mindset. Good for everyone, except perhaps the people who decide rules for international <laughs> team eligibility. <laughs> that's the last thing they would want to hear. <laughs> So then on from Scotland, staying in, shall we say, the northern half of Europe. Of course, uh, when we have our Nordic expert, Stefan Mobus on, it's only fair that we give him his time to shine. And uh, Stefan, could you please take us through uh, the latest action for all the Aussies playing in the Nordic countries? By the way, just the reason we don't call it um, Scandinavia is because I think Dale very kindly let us know a couple of years ago, Iceland. To, which was this was news to me at the time. Iceland, not in Scandinavia. Uh, neither, we... Yeah, neither's Denmark. So... Oh, ne- oh, Denmark. Yeah. Oh, yeah. so okay. So that's why it's the Nordic rap that we do, yep. not the Scandinavian rap. But anyway, go on, Stefan. Yeah, thanks, Eric. It's a it's a busy corner of the world at the moment uh, with all the competitions up and going, except for Iceland at the moment with the Aussies there. So I'll just uh, fairly quickly run through things. Uh, in the top series in Norway, um, Kali Rosbach and will hopefully get some game time tonight. Um, playing against um, uh, Lynn. It's going to be a potentially a tight contest. Uh, it, I know they're only four rounds in, but um, both teams are next to each other on the ladder in, in fourth and fifth. And Carly was in the promos for the game, so hoping that she gets a bit more time than she did towards the end of the last game. Uh, so we'll see what happens tonight. Um, over in Sweden in round three, um, Tegan, Micah and Charlie Grant sat on the bench, um, having just come back from, from Australia, I think, for, for Rosengard in their 5-2 away win against Jurgardens. Um, uh, that lifts uh, Rosengard way up the ladder to, to uh, second place. Um, as I said, though, it's only round three, so these sort of movements are bound to happen. Um, Polks uh, played 69 minutes, which is an amazing effort given the, uh, the trip that she 
had as well coming back from from the game um, from the game here in Canberra um, in their four nil away loss to Yamia, unfortunately for Vizio. Um, and it looks like Mini is in Sweden, but it is was not yet part of the uh, the match day squad. So hopefully that'll that'll happen soon. Uh, that result leaves Vizio in thirteenth place at the moment, but it's early days. Um, over at Hammerby, who are currently twelfth, they had a home one nil win against sixth place Pataya, and Courtney Nevin played made her debut and played the mm. full game at left back. And received the player of the match award from for the game. So uh, that's what I've read. So well done to Courtney. Uh, good start. Uh, no sign of Kyra Cooney Cross yet, and uh, nothing. Uh, I haven't really heard anything yet about uh, KK either. So uh, still contracted to the club, uh, we believe, until 2024. Um, Remy Simpson's AIK had a three nil home loss to uh, top of the ladder BK Hecken. Uh, Remy was not yet on the team sheet, um, but again, pro- possibly understandable given, uh, you know, the travel demands and things there. Uh, AIK are currently 10th. Beyond 90, the podcast on joy, taking you behind the goals, beyond the pitch and into what makes women's football the game we love. This is Beyond 90, the podcast on joy 94.9. And in the division below that, the El- Elitang, um, they also played round three and uh, Annie Haffenden's Vex, Veco, which is where Winnie Hitley played last year, they're playing tonight against fourth place Uppsala and they currently lead the competition there. So that's the Sweden comp, comp all wrapped up over in Denmark. A really good win uh, in the championship round robins in round three of it to um, Fortuna Hearing where... Uh, some Aussies had some really um, massive parts to play in the win. Um, Angie Beard scored two goals and Indy Riley also scored. And there was some very nice interchange between the two. Um, if you watch the highlights, which we'll put on the on the pod notes and which will no doubt form part of the Nordic rap this week when I get around to writing it. Uh, Claire Wheeler also, also played half a game. So, again, that's a good effort for having mm-hmm. just battled. So that 4-1 win uh, leaves them in second place and they won against uh, third place Bromby. So, um, yeah, good win in in that competition. And over in the relegation round, Robins, also the third round, um, Jenna McCormick's AGF had a 2-0 home win over sixth place, which is bottom place in that that competition, um, Varde. Uh, but Jenna was not on the team sheet, so we're hoping that she's um, back back on the park soon with that ankle knock I think she took a week or two ago. And, uh, yeah, I mentioned Iceland before. Their competition starts April the 28th, which is in just over a week's time, isn't it, in 10 days' time, mm-hmm. uh, where Margot Chauvet and Susan fongson can are going to be running out for KR Reykjavik. And that's it for the Nordics. Thanks so much, Stefan. Now on... Anyone aware of any NWSL action? Uh, so, and we also had uh, Emily Van Egmont uh, started for San Diego at home against Portland uh, in the NWSL. <laughs> not the best, uh, not the best afternoon for for the San Diego Wave, um, who, aside from having one of the best logos in world football, um, had an awful result. They were down three 0 at halftime. Uh, they ended up going down three uh, two at home to. Uh, Portland Thorns. Interesting that, um, and I don't know this has probably been covered, but uh, they're the home team for Alex Morgan. There's, a, there's a, a bunch of players that you would probably know if you've uh, followed women's football for a little bit. They've got Carly Telford, former England goalkeeper, or current England goalkeeper, Abby Darkemper, uh, Jody Taylor, who also plays for England, and Alex Morgan, who is, I mean, was arguably the face of women's football for a number of years. Probably still is. Um, thing that I don't like about San Diego Wave, if they call their substitutes game changers. Can't oh no uh, no 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 no! That's that's, 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 that's I know. <laughs> they can't be doing that at the time that they enter the field. Then uh, that's you. You need to change the game, basically. No sub substandard. I, I think. I think. Uh, but yeah. Anyway, that's that's. Uh, I believe she's the only player in NWSL at the moment. Um, um, racing Louisville. I don't th- don't think Chid's got a run for Racing Louisville this week. Um, yeah, yeah, they. Uh, I did see that they did score. I did still see Louisville score an amazing goal this week, uh, but we will put that in the show notes. Okay, yep. Um, also, and don't suppose you wouldn't know how Chelsea Dorber got on at Chicago Red Stars? Uh, so we didn't have. Uh, so 
we didn't have Chelsea Dorber on the starting 11 for mm-hmm. Chicago in their game against Racing Louisville. But mm-hmm. as I said, uh, Louisville did score that amazing goal at home. There was a one all draw at what I believe is the it called Louisville City Stadium or something like that. Um, but yeah, one all for uh, Chicago and Racing Louisville. That was Chelsea Dorber's team, but uh, haven't got any information as to uh, whether she actually played in that match, unfortunately. Um, but interesting to know that, you know, we're only kind of four rounds in at this point. So there's plenty, plenty of football still to be played. Good thing about NWSL is because they play each other, I think, three times. It's a fairly okay. long season now. Ooh, that's good. Yeah. So, you know, there'll be, there'll be more of more football and, and obviously really good to see that she's uh, out of Australia, out of the MPL and, and you know, spreading her yeah. for want of a word. And um, I love this because uh, last year, I believe she was at this 12 months ago, she would have been playing for Adelaide City, I think. So, that's quite yeah, the step up, right. and um, yeah, great to see. Her. I mean, I think she's pretty, she's I mean, well deserved after um her performances in the last two A League women's seasons. So yeah, I think that. So by the way, I actually did manage to jag a couple of other Aussies abroad updates. So from France, um, we have, we talk about how tough it is to back up on the weekend domestically after playing internationally on the other side of the world, unless you're Ellie Carpenter who played a full game as Leon beat um, FC Fleury 91-2-1. And then Mary Fowler played the first half in Montpellier's 3-1 loss to Paris FC. So, I mean, Ellie Carpenter has no time for your recovery or your, um, <laughs> your sports science. Just, just let her get on the field. Amazing. <laughs> yes. I, I like my hamstrings are sore just, which saw just looking at the stats for that game because that doesn't make any sense. But anyway, that's why she's an elite athlete and I am not. So oh, let's go on to the various NPL action because, of course, the NPL seasons are underway in Australia. Stefan, just clarifying, no games over Easter for capital football? That's right. Never okay, yep. so yes. That's and now, cool. yeah, that's good. And I think that's probably, you know, what uh, would be the preferred option, although... I mean, I don't, us New South Wales, we can't afford to do that time wise. And before I get carried away with NPL New South Wales, Madge, you had not quite NPL, but um, some cup updates from Queensland? Yeah, so we've got the uh, the Kappa Women's Super Cup, so the knockout tournament uh, here in Queensland. So um, no NPL um, this weekend, but uh, yeah, we had a, a whole raft of um, Metro uh, Kappa Cup. Uh, games and so we had the Queensland Academy of Sport uh, defeating Albany Creek 3 uh, 0. Lions trucking on as they do, um, but not without conceding a goal against Annalee FC. So, but um, but they took it away 12 uh, 1. Um, also, Morton Bay United um, defeating like the the, the previous um, powerhouses of MPL Queensland, the Gap. Mm-hmm. Um, Morton Bay defeated them 9 0. Um, yeah, so that, that was a, a, a big game, but yeah, no gap, not, not quite the, um, not, not quite the experience. And then the squad that, that they have had in, um, seasons gone by, uh, then South United defeated, uh, Brisbane city FC three, one, um, sunshine coast warriors, wanderers, sorry, beat Virginia United, uh, four, one, um, Pen Power got the upset of the round, um, defeating uh, MPL um, team Eastern Suburbs 3-2. So that was probably the biggest upset we saw. Gold Coast defeated uh, Southwest Queensland Thunder 6-1. Uh, Logan Lightning defeated Western Pride 2-1. And uh, Mitchelton United uh, defeated Broadbeach United uh, 2-0. Yeah, thanks so much for that, Mad. Uh uh, Dale and I once again lamenting the lack of a cum competition for NPL New South Wales. But speaking of Dale, don't even get me started. Yes, I just, yeah, man. <laughs> Why? Why? Why yeah. are we like this? In- uh, no, but we, yeah, no, we, yeah. At least you know, at least we're getting. With I, I must say, I know they're not the, the Queen of the Week because it's kind of hard to give uh, royalty of the week to um, a website. Um, but I must say I've been super impressed with the NPL TV offering this season. There's yes. been a few changes in terms of the way that the game's clipped up um, yeah. and it makes kind of following the game a lot easier if yes. you kind of don't want to watch the whole game, but you've got the opportunity to watch the yeah. highlights. Yeah. Um, but yeah, uh, got the chance to watch Sydney Uni versus uh, Newcastle, well, 
emerging jets, Newcastle's mm-hmm. um, academy team was was um, pretty impressed with with Uni considering it's uh, it was their first win of the season. They got a two 0 win, but yeah, um, early days. There's still a lot of players out. There's still games that are yet to be played, uh, and yep. uh, I think there was this talk of a. I think there's a game coming up this week as uh, this Tuesday. It's like coverage already for games that have been missed. So yes, um, yeah, that's, that's right. Hey. Comes okay. with the territory of having a very strong uh, Premier League, unfortunately. Yes, yeah, so you got that. Um, yeah, you're right. So Sydney Uni and Blacktown Spartans, they they'll play on Sunday, and then it, they'll they'll play their regularly scheduled games on Sunday, and then they've got a catch up game against each other on the Tuesday. So that's that's going to be a bit of rough. That's a bit rough early in the season, but uh, just suppose you know, yeah, as you said, Dale, you have to fit the games in. But uh, I'll just uh, briefly go. I go through the. Um, other results because what they'll refer to NPL.TV, um, you can actually watch goal clips while the games are still in progress, which is uh, quite an advancement. So credit to everyone there and the people at Clutch, of course, because NPL TV is powered by Clutch for creating that system. So big result, uh, but uh, between MacArthur and Spirit, MacArthur Rams beat Spirit FC 6-1, two hat-tricks, one to Japanese import Miku Sanaga, who scored a hat trick on a debut, another hat trick to Laura Murtag, and the spirit goal coming from Talia Macri. Manly shocked Sydney Olympic by three goals to nil, goals from Caitlin Jarby, Maddie Zara, and Yuka Honda. Um, up at North Tarmar Recreation Area, the most important thing is Tory Toom have scored, and much, much less importantly, Northern Tigers beat Apia three goals to two. So Tigers goals, a double from Maddie Bart, and another one from uh, Ashley Brodigan, who you'll remember from. Newcastle Jets and Apia's other goal coming from Rihanna Policina. Then uh, Black uh, Stefan and I will love this one. It's like my brand st- setting up Stefan's brand. Black Dan Spartans beat Football New South Wales Institute 1 0. A defense building through ball from Ashley Crofts and 85th minute winner from Rachel Goldstein. And then uh, the game I've just come from, the game I called for NPL TV, Bankstown City beat Illawarra Stingrays by two goals to one. So that's uh, good for them. That's been a rough couple of recent seasons for Bankstown City. Good to see them get off the mark nice and early. Bankstown's goals from Sky Kasakia and Olivia Price and the Illawarra goal from Sheridan Gallagher. So that's the quick round. Oh, by the way, um, Sydney Uni's goals from Holly Caspers and Holly Duncan. It's time for Beyond 90, the podcast's Queen of the Week, celebrating the weekly highlights from the Queens, Kings and non-binary royalty of women's football. Uh, I think the, all that's left is the Queen of the Week, and Stefan was more prepared than any of the rest of us. I still haven't picked mine, actually. So, Stefan, you can go first. All righty. Uh, so, Angie Beard, not only was she uh, selected in the um, the team of the round for her efforts, the, the two goals, and her efforts for Fortuna Hearing, Hearing this week, but she was also selected as the player of the entire round, the best player of the round. So, well done, Angie. Angie must be still wondering what uh, what she has to do to be uh, involved back in I've got something to say about that, but go on. Up. <laughs> so uh, she's probably still scratching her head, given the fact that her last outing, I believe, was uh, quite a strong one for, for the Matildas and hasn't been seen since. Um, but, yeah, uh, kill, killing it in uh, over in Denmark. So uh, well done, Angie. You're my queen of the week. Okay, so Madge, you go for, can you go next, please? Yeah, yeah, sure. Um, so mine, my queen, kings, monarchs of the weekers, everyone who turned up and active uh, in Townsville and Canberra. I think Canberra, we had the bigger crowd, but um, it was just fantastic to get some more voices in there and, and really, really create a great atmosphere at the game. So uh, next games that we have here, come join us because it's a lot of fun and the more the merrier. Beyond 90, the podcast on joy, taking you behind the goals, beyond the pitch and into what makes women's football the game we love. This is Beyond 90, the podcast on Joy 94.9. Dale, so who was your queen slash king slash non-binary legend of the week? Uh, my queen of the week is Niamala Devi from the Indian Women's League. Uh, she plays for Kickstart FC. And boy, did she kick and start this week. Scored an absolute screamer from about 35 metres out against uh, she plays for uh, Kickstart FC, as I said, they're in Bangalore and they, she played against FIFA Sports from Mumbai. Um, yeah, if you get if, if you get to see the video, I've just seen it again on Reddit and it is it is probably the best goal I've seen in the last 
maybe a month or two. It's an absolute <laughs> screamer. Basically gets the ball back from um, the left wing, takes one touch to push it forward, and then just hits it like a traction engine. So we love to say that. So she's my queen of the lake. Okay. Oh, by the way, the point I was making, Stefan, uh, Angie Beard need. Well, if the rumor of Hurd is true, Angie Beard need not worry about Matilda's eligibility. She should just play for the Philippines. I've heard that she's eligible. And um, yes, I didn't suspect this at all, but um, she's more than welcome with the Malditas. But uh, my queen of the week, I mentioned her earlier. It's uh, MacArthur Rams, uh, new Japanese star, Miku Sanaga. How about that? You're in a new country. It's you know, it's always difficult to set in, settle in at a new club anyway, much even more so when you know it's a new country there's a bit of a language barrier probably but scored a hat trick uh first goal in particular caught my eye uh somehow finding space at a set piece in amongst that giant spirit fc backline so yeah miku miku sanaga hat tricks on debut uh that's that will make you a queen for sure so that that's about good. all it's a good goal too she was very yeah. good yeah she was so, so um newsflash japanese players good at football the <laughs> Now, so that's about it for now. Um, thanks so much to all of you for tuning in, whether it's um, the usual pod, pod platforms that you use or Joy Radio or Clutch Radio. Um, and also thanks to you, Madge, Stefan and Dale for uh, joining in at so late on Monday night at the time of recording. Pleasure. Good. I'm going to bed. Yep. Thanks, okay. Guys. Great yeah, idea. Off to bed. <laughs> yes, it is bedtime. And thanks so much, so much again. And um, we'll... Um, See you all next time. Cheers. See you guys. Beyond 90, the podcast on joy, taking you behind the goals, beyond the pitch, and into what makes women's football the game we love.